time we were playing, uh, we were playing. Hi guys, my name is Lane, and today we'll be playing Andromeda 6. Hopefully, we will last longer with this game. I have no idea if someone else played this game. I just read the comments, you know. Pretty good reviews so far. And, and again, another game from Itch.io, which I have been getting more and more obsessed with. I found more games, actually, but I felt this one would get to us. Again, this, I think, is another novel type. Okay. We might get seizures. Do we have seizures? No, we do not. Okay. Enter name. What is my problem? Actually, this is very nice. I like the fact that they took the uh, they took the idea or the time to put the extra pronoun. Ah, uh, let's see. So there are three types of species. Okay, we don't want to be human because we we already are human. So Tilari, a gentle and intelligent alien race dedicated to their medical studies and nurturing way of life. Human. The most populous of all species, renowned for their scientific advances and engineering. Hitalfan. Is that right? A humanoid race gifted with the ability to live both on land or water. This unique species easily adapts to their chosen habitat. Oh, look at that. You see the scales on the neck, right? And then it highlights. That's a, that's a good feature. I like the fact that they highlight some parts of the, uh, of the person. Let's choose this one. Something new, you know. Error 404. <clears throat> it's kind of cold where I am right now, especially with the air conditioning on because outside of the house it's actually pretty hot. And these days I'm just inside, you know. But I have hot chocolate with me. My eyes cracked open slowly, one and then the other. There's a heaviness that settled behind them, and I squint as I adjust to the fluorescent lights hanging overhead. I'm gonna use my normal voice for my own character. I'll try to make other voices for the other characters, if I can adjust to that. If I can adjust to that. <laughs> okay. With a low groan, I managed to push myself up on my elbows, surveying my surroundings clumsily. Oh, I don't know where I am. A small room, metal walls, a desk, two doors positioned opposite me. A couple of empty crates sit stacked in one corner and overall the room gives off the impression of being unused. Are we a prisoner? No personal belongings, no decoration, it's all quiet there. I panic for a moment, my mind racing through all the possible reasons there could be to explain my being here. In this place, I don't recognize with no. Oh. Um. I panic for a moment, my my mind racing through the possible reasons there could be to explain my being here in this place. I don't recognize. I can't see that. With no memory of how I got here. Okay. Am I in a cell? Most probably looks like it. I push myself into a sitting position, my body feeling like an entire building has fallen on it. The mattress beneath me, although soft enough to be comfortable, does not does nothing to soothe the ache that has settled in my muscles. Just a little intro. My eyes flick over the small room once again, eyebrows dipping in confusion. There's something else, a whirring. I feel it almost as much as I hear it. Is the room moving? My breath sticks in my throat, panic and confusion rising in me like a wave. Where the hell am I? And why can't I remember anything? The door opposite me hisses and shifts, sliding back into the wall as it opens, and something in me turns defensive, pulls my knees up to my chest. Oh, hello there. 
Oh, I didn't know you were awake. I'm not gonna do voices for the guys. The man that enters is so tall, his head almost touches the top of the door frame. I'm betting this guy is human. Apologies, I should have knocked. She offers me a tight smile, and the metal chair beneath the desk scrapes across the floor as he pulls it out, sitting and leaning forward, with his arms rested on his knees. How are you feeling? He looks at me expectantly, and though I refuse to let my guard down so easily, an answer escapes me anyway. Mm. According to what she's described so far, she feels like she's been manhandled into the room. Uh, maybe we'll just go with fine because, you know, she was not- she's trying to be defensive in a way. I took the- uh, I looked the man over from his gentle half-smile to his casual posture. My gaze falls nervously upon the pistol strapped to his body, but there's nothing in his demeanor that suggests he intends to use them. He certainly doesn't look like he's here to harm me. I- I think I'm fine, thanks. Oh, it's not us? Still a question mark. I'm glad to hear that. His eyes squint when he smiles at me, and I find myself thinking there's something I like about them, something warm. I know I might not say this, but like, in the start screen where you saw all the characters, I feel like I'm gonna choose this guy over all of them. Something reminds me of him. Ah. I was worried about you after. Oh, he looks sad. Mm. I like his hair though. His build, as long as it's not too muscular, I guess I'm fine with that. But the gun though, the gun. I'm worried about the gun. <laughs> Can he be the captain of the ship? With like, the emblem on his uh, waistcoat. His eyes flicker a little, almost as though he would take back those words if he could. Oops, are getting dry. After what? The awkward silence that follows is noticeable. There's hesitation hanging thick in the air. There's a lot of narration in here, good god. Something happens, something big, and somehow I can't remember what. Though even in the face of such uncertainty, one thing is abundantly clear. Whether I can trust the man in front of me or not, I need answers. And I need this to be a full screen. Who are you or where am I? Okay, where am I? I can already see outer space in the background of the window, so I don't think... I need to do the where am I part. So, who are you? He hesitates only a moment before something unseen inside him shifts. Smile. His name is June. The ship. This ship we're on is the Andromeda 6, the finest cruiser around, and my home. At least for the time being, anyway. June pauses before saying any more, his brow furrowed in thought. This reminds me of that movie, um, The Passenger, I think it was, and these two people who, uh, they woke up too early when they were going to be transported into another planet because the planet that they live on is probably overpopulated, which is the Earth. So it took about 100 light years for them to travel, but then the guy uh, woke up maybe around 30 or 40 light years too early and he had to he stayed on the ship awake with no one on it uh, and he had to wake up someone because he's gonna get bored of course and who can who can live without company for for years and won't you go insane? At least comment that if you would go insane down in the comment section below. If you were the only person awake on a spacecraft with everyone else in their sleeping pods, would you go insane? Let's go back. What can I call you? I'm. I open my mouth to tell him, but stop short when no memory of my name surfaces. Who am I? I have a name. I feel it there on the tip of my tongue. 
but every time I reach out, it escapes me. Not sure. June frowns and I can't keep the worry from bubbling up inside me. I should be able to remember something as simple as my own name. Closing my eyes, I try to coax the memory to the forefront of my mind. I can almost feel it on the tip of my tongue and I know it's close, hidden behind the mist in my mind. Nothing. I can't remember. My throat tightens at the realization not knowing where I am is one thing, but not knowing my own name. All the names that cross my mind feel foreign, not one of them standing out as mine. Who? Panic begins to crawl into my lungs, contracting my throat, leaving me gasping for breath. Hey, don't panic. Look at me. Oh my god, his eyes are mesmerizing. <gasps> my gosh. June pulls his chair close to the bed, his eyes locked on mine. He takes a deep breath and through his nose, releasing it slowly through his mouth with a hand. He gestures for me to do the same. You know if he had glasses right now? I would I would be there, I would be there. If he had glasses. And probably a black and gold jersey. <laughs> After a few breaths, in and out, my muscle seems to unknot a little. Reason, returning to me. Now close your eyes, relax, just keep breathing through it. I'm hesitant, but I follow his instruction. Rolling my shoulders a little, I close my eyes and let out a deep, shuddering breath. I know my name, it's here, somewhere. Don't try to force it, focus on clearing your mind. Calming it, let it come to you. I mean, that's actually pretty smart, damn smart. His voice washes over me like a bomb, soothing and healing my fractured nerves. Breathe in, breathe out. Let's do it with them. Breathe in, breathe out. <sighs> breathe in, <laughs> breathe out. Ever so slowly, my mind empties the darkness it leaves behind like an endless abyss waiting to be filled. After a few more moments, something clicks into place. Click. Like the download button in my brain has regained power once again. Trying to hold all the other thoughts at bay, I part my lips in a speaking word that hangs like a neon light in the back of my mind. Hold on, let me just... I want to see if I can... Oh my god, what did I do? <gasps> what did I do? Oh my gosh. Uh oh my god. 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 What did I do? Okay. So do not press that button. <laughs> okay. Trying to hold all the thoughts at bay. My lips I part my lips and speak the word that hangs like me. Okay, finish that. Lane. It's our name. Hello, my name is Lane. Nice to meet you. Lane, that's my name. A breath of fresh air washes through my lungs. My frustration from earlier is seeding a little. I try to push a little further, a last name or even my home. But the more I try, the more the black hole of my memory sucks me into the nothingness. Nothing comes to mind, not even the slightest inkling. I have no idea what inkling means. And if I did, I would have told you by now. Hmm. I decide not to push it anymore now. My first name will have to do. Slowly, I open my eyes again. A smile tugging at my lips as my eyes fall upon June. And that contagious lo lopsided grin of his. I know who else has a lopsided grin like that. I'm Lane. June grins wider, and it's one of those smiles that reaches his eyes, wrinkles the skin beside them. You know who smiles like that? It's a pleasure to meet you, Lane. Do you remember anything else? I search my mind every darkened crevice and corner, but come up short. It sounds like one of my really depressing poems I used to write in the past. Every darkened crevice and corner. <laughs> my god. 
Junlato Asayas, that burdens him to be the one. Tell me that uh, whatever comes next. There was an attack on the palace in the salt of the VA. We found you unconscious nearby. A bridge has collapsed. Well, it had been destroyed, actually. Duh. Our medic healed what she could, but we never expected memory loss to be a factor. Perhaps you lived around the area. Does any of this sound familiar to you? No, it is not. I shake my head. I recall the city of Silta VA, capital of the planet Goldus, but did I live there? Do I have a life there or a family waiting for me? My mind seems bathed in darkness, coming up blank with each attempt to remember my past. I'm sorry I remember the city, but nothing past that. It just reminds me of how many times I've moved houses in the past. There was one in where I was like a baby and then uh, I was with my grandparents, my parents, my actual parents and uh, that was my first home. I was still the only child at that time and then after that I moved once again and we had like roommates or flatmates as they say it from here where we had another couple with us and they wanted to have a baby for so long they haven't gotten one so <laughs> I remember I would go behind the TV stand because there's like a little space uh, because the wall is like uh, it suddenly become becomes a, a corner or a bend and then there's like a little space or crevice as you can say behind the TV stand and I would like pray or something for um, for them to have a baby I would pray so much every day and it would be like I don't even. I didn't. What? Did you? <laughs> to be honest, it doesn't even sound like me to do. It's too cute. It's not like me. I'm sorry, I remember the city, but nothing past that. June ducks his head, thinking for a moment. Yeah, you have to duck your head, look. You're like. tall. It could be some type of short-term memory loss. We'll have our medic look over you again. Okay. If you remember where you're from, we can help you get back there. There must be someone waiting for you. I don't want to go back. I mean, look at that. There's nothing else to go back to anymore, is there? Uh, there isn't. The words leave my mouth before I can stop them, but somehow I know it's true. And it even if it wasn't, what good would it be if I can't even remember them? Jun shifts in his chair, but I cut in before he has a chance to say more. All I know right now is my name is my name. I have you to thank for that. It's a start, right? Oh, that's no. I chew on my bottom lip anxiously, feeling his eyes flicker over me. Oh, no, 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 no. I know the thought of forgetting everything should be terrifying, but for some reason, I feel... Hmm with him. I know there are other characters, but should I feel calm or should I feel worried? I think I, to be honest, in these situations, I would feel calm. A peace with whatever has happened to me. Because it's happened, right? So you have to let it go past. You don't want to dwell on it, do you? I don't know. Maybe it's a sign, you know, opportunity for me to make a fresh start. Go lane. <laughs> Go for that fresh start. Ooh. I still want to remember something, anything. But I could be on the run, for all I know. Exile, even. Better to avoid that kind of trouble, don't you think? Oh, he's shocked. An uneasiness settles in my stomach, and I think that perhaps I'm more shaken up than I've let on. The only consolation is that June seems even more concerned than I am. His eyes go up wide at my words and I can practically feel the concern dripping from him. He doesn't look concerned, he looks terrified. I could be a criminal. Criminal. <laughs> I could be a criminal, maybe even... More than a criminal, maybe I could be a murderer. Maybe that's the truth. Oh. What was that? Something came out. Oh. We can't skip. Control the skip. 
I, I'm sorry, you should get you to the medic. She'll be able to help you far better than I can. Well, he's concerned, he's scared, he's shaken. She's Tilari, perhaps you remember their reputation? Indeed, Tilari are exceptional healers, though I can't recall ever, ever meeting any of the species before. Hmm. <clears throat> Oh, it's not hot anymore. It's it's getting cold. <laughs> Jun offers his hand to help me stand. Well, this writer, whoever made this game, is a poet. When I take it, when I take it, his skin is surprisingly warm. A stark contrast to the cold metal walls of the room around us. Despite the roughness of his skin, the calluses on his fingers, his touch is gentle. Here's to me hoping he plays guitar. For a moment, is there even guitar on, on this unknown uni in this unknown universe? Or at least a ship, even? For a moment, I think I'm okay to stand on my own, but then I let go of his hand. My legs buckle beneath me. Letting out a yelp, I'm hit with a sense of falling for only a split second before strong arms wrap around my waist, holding me up. Aha! Falling for someone already, huh? That's not good. Mm -mm. Lane, are you alright? Um, should I flirt with him? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> should I flirt? Let's take a long hard sip on this and think. One more sip will do. Yeah, I think we should flip with him. Let's flip with him. June's arms around me make my skin tingle in ways I'm not sure they should. <laughs> I can't help but wonder about that golden sand, about the strength I can feel under the fabric on his clothes. You know, if you wanted to get closer, you could have just asked. <laughs> what? No, sorry. I. It was just. Just what, June? I can't help but laugh at the way his face blushes, how his eyes go wide. I can. I can already imagine someone's face like that. Every single time. I say <laughs> For someone who was at who at first seemed so composed, who knew he could be flustered. Who knew he could be flustered so easily? That is a problem. No need to apologize, I'm not complaining. Oh, I... He clears his throat in what I assume is an attempt to regain some of his composure. Well, I shall keep that in mind then. My mouth twitches in its attempt to hide the smirk threatens to peek out at his words. Feeling steadier, I take a step back from him before my legs go weak again, and this time for another reason entirely. Sorry for that, I was just... Don't, I'm not complaining either. <laughs> That's someone's smile. <laughs> oh, smooth. Touché. Touché, June. His eyes locked on mine, and there's something different about them, something I can't quite place. I shall also keep that in mind. <laughs> Oh shoot, there's something happening. I'm cut short when the lights above us blink a couple of times and the ship lurches, prompting June to steady me with a hand on my arm once again. What was that? Just technical issues. What kind of technical issues? It should be... Shouldn't the italics be on the kind? Because, you know, emphasis. It's like, what kind of technical issues? Not that I'm complaining, it's a good... So far it's good. Trust me, so far it's good. I am entertained. I am intrigued. Last thing I need is to be stranded on a broken ship with no memory. One crisis at a time, thank you very much. June smiles at me reassuringly. After wise enough. Okay. Nothing to worry about. Come on, I'll show you the infirmary on my way up. Kind of Star Wars uh, 
vibe going on here. I follow behind June with a couple of corridors. The ship isn't massive by any means, but it certainly seems bigger than I expected. When he stops in front of a set of blue transparent double doors, he turns to me. This is where I leave you. I should probably get back, uh, get to the bridge before all hell breaks loose. Why is it not letting me? The alarm must show on my face because he shakes his head and chuckles softly. Nothing to worry about now. Head in. Head on in. Rihanna will take care of you. Thank you, Jim. He stops and gives me a strange look, his eyes wide. But just as quickly he smiles gently and nods before disappearing down the corridor. Is he concerned? Have I lost my mind in this game? Is my character... Like... Oh, no. Now I feel like... Now I remember why this art style is kind of... Familiar. If you've seen Game Dream Daddy and... Uh, compare it against June's um, character here, you'll see that it's kind of similar, the structuring of the body, I mean. Um, when I enter the infirmary as cautious and quiet as a rabbit avoiding a trap, the first thing that hits me is the smell. Another thought, just seeing the fact that June just switched his a uh, facial expression from a worried look to a smile just shows that he's trying to like he's more closed in more uh, he keeps more to himself you know it smells clean but not in that sterile medical way more like dewy grass and fresh rain like the open air and sky i love that smell like when it uh, when there's like a grass field and it just newly rained that smells so good. I miss outside. It reminds me of a cool spring morning, though I can't recall having ever experienced one. It's almost homely. Oh, you're awake. The voice that startles me is surprisingly soft and my head tilts to, to follow the sound. As you can see with the question marks, it's blue, so we're probably getting the female blue character that we saw in the in the opening screen. Ah yes. She is Tilari by the looks of her luminescent skin, her primal yellow eyes. Almost finished, let me just finish this. I'm Rihanna, it's good to finally see you up and about. You've been looking after me? She smiles and there's something so soft, so calming about it, that it soothes right down to my bones. She looks pretty. I'm reluctant to let my guard down so easily, but her soothing presence hardly inspires fear. Yes, I'm the medic here. And your name is? Lane. Oh, okay. So, that logo on their uniforms is not... Is not the sign for captain, it's the letter 6, I just saw that. And then you can see the letter A somehow pasted all over the logo, the emblem. Pleasure to meet you, Lane. Please, take a seat, let's have a look at you. She gestures with long, thin fingers towards the medical chair that positioned in the center of the room, and I follow her instruction, noting the plastic that crinkles beneath me as I sit. So, how are you feeling? Physically, I think I'm okay, but as the day ends, she cocks her head to the side, watching me curiously and giving me time to get my thoughts in order. Someone messaged me. I said, no one, me don't message me during during my videos, bro. Oh, never mind. It's in another language. I cannot read that. Thank you, guys, whoever is messaging me in another language. Um, oh, never mind. Not important. I hesitate. Uh, we read that. I haven't been able to remember much besides my name. I see. Rihanna grabs a long silver wand from the metal table and holds it in front of me. May I? 
What are you gonna do with that? Are you gonna prove my skull? And she lights a tip with a swish. Swish! Shining the blue lights on the end into my eyes, one after the other. I suspected you had a concussion when they brought you in here. You had hit your head rather hard. I cleaned it up and lasered the wound back together, but I'm afraid there's not a lot I can do for memory loss. Her fingers are cool against my scalp when she inspects the old wound. Next, giving an approving hum at whatever she finds there. Have you noticed any issues with your vision or coordination? Silver wand is pressed again, uh, gently against inside my ear before Riona pulls it back out and inspects the strange illuminated symbols on the thing on the side. When I first got out of bed, I lost my balance since then, apart from the memory thing, I've been feeling fine. Riona holds the wand in front of my face vertically and the blue light washes over me, blinking for a few seconds before it dissipates entirely. When I follow her gaze to the screen behind me, the images have changed, depicting a series of numbers and icons I can't understand. Your scans are almost back to normal, aside from some bruising here and there, but that's to be expected. She stands back and inspects me, her nose crinkled slightly in thought. Physically, you're healing well if you've already remembered your name. My best guess would be a mild case of retrograde amnesia. I do not know what that is. Retrograde, le, retrograde, retrograde amnesia. <laughs> yes, it's more common than you may think following a head injury, though I can't say that every patient heals in the same way, but it will heal. I will remember, won't I? Rihanna gives a sad smile, and in that moment, I know she's just as unsure as I am. Only time will tell. Perhaps if I ask you some questions, they might trigger a memory. It's worth a shot. Let's see, where did you live? In a big city. At least, I think so. The images are hazy, but then... But when I really think about it, I get flashes of a golden sky, clouds stretching as far as I can see. That's a good start. Do you see anything else? I close my eyes like I did earlier with June and try to remember more. White, gold, and water. No, fountains. There were fountains everywhere. That sounds like gold is alright. The planet gets its water source from tunnels deep below the earth. The fountains make it accessible to everyone. Let's see if you remember anything else. Do you have any siblings? I do. Yes, I think I had many. I have this feeling I was always surrounded by brothers and sisters, but it never felt like a family. There was one more, though. Uh, I guess when a sharp pain shoots through my head, whatever memory I was grasping onto slipping through my fingers like sand. I, I can't remember anymore. Don't push yourself too hard. You can try again later. I nod and glanced around the room, and once again, I... I'm hit by that smell, I notice that there's something else mixed into it. Something sweet, almost fruity. Can I ask what this smell is? Oh, there's a cutscene. Oh, it's my mister. Brianna gestures to a small cylinder-shaped object in the corner of the room. I can program it to replicate scents. This one is of my home planet, Solarin. She giggles unexpectedly, as if she didn't mean to say that. I guess I'm a little homesick. And your family? You must miss them too. She blinks a little at the question, but writes herself almost instantly. To be perfectly honest, my parents never had a lot of time for me when I was growing up. I miss my home, but I've always wanted to travel. The system. I've seen far more in a year than almost Tulare seen in their entire lives. Her face drops a little, and I wonder idly if not all that she's seen is good. This makes me worry for her. I don't. She's not really my type of person. But like. Okay, now I need water. My throat is getting a little itchy. 
because of the heart chocolate that turned cold. You know, the good thing about the pellets for those hot chocolate for the hot chocolate I drowned. So you can melt it and drink it, but you can also eat it. So it serves the purpose. And that's not entirely bitter, as you may say, because there's some pellets for hot chocolate that are bitter, but this one you can eat as well. So it makes me happy. Sorry. I need to hydrate. And all of you guys out there, hydrate because you need to stay safe and healthy. If you don't keep enough water in your system, you can't flush out all the bacteria, you know. Along with that, wash your hands. And also, please, drink some vitamin C. It's good for you. It's good for your system. You can buy those tablets that are 1,000 milligrams. But um, if you're like my age, which is teenager age, <laughs> major age uh, you can split one pill into half and drink only 500 mg so that's good for you and so here I need to stop because we are getting a little this uh, recording is a little more over schedule and yeah we're delving into some serious stuff over here so I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Tune in. It's Lane. Bye.